Welcome to the video on distance. By the time you've finished watching this video, you should be able to compute the distance between two points in the coordinate plane. Before we get going with distance, I want to just think in the back of our minds for a minute a little bit about what distance is and what it means. I might say that the distance between two things is going to be the length of the piece that joins them or connects them. So if I think about this in terms of, of the geometric objects that we've looked at and explored so far this year, we've looked at angles, we've looked at lines, we've looked at rays, we've looked at line segments. And as far as distance is concerned, none of the first three would really be able to have distance. They're all infinitely large or infinitely long, and as such, we really couldn't find the length of any one of those. The only one that we can really find distance for is the last one, the line segment. And the distance of that line segment would really be the length of the line segment that connects the two endpoints, which end the line segment. Or in other words, you might say the distance between the two red points, which represent the endpoints of the line segment. So again, whereas midpoint was really only for line segments, distance also only for line segments. It doesn't apply to angles or lines or rays. All right, so with that said, let's go ahead and jump right into this one. It says, find the distance between the two points whose coordinates are negative 2, 1, and 4, 3. So the first thing I'm going to do is put those two endpoints on my coordinate plane. So I've got negative 2, 1 right there and I've got 4, 3 right there. So there's the line segment they're asking me to find the distance of. I'm looking at that saying, hmm, if that were a perfectly horizontal line segment or a perfectly vertical line segment, I could just count the boxes and I'd be all set. But this is neither perfectly horizontal nor perfectly vertical. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to break it apart into two pieces that are perfectly horizontal and perfectly vertical. I'm going to consider that red line segment right there. And I'm going to consider this purple line segment right here. Because one is horizontal and the other is vertical, I know that they have to form a right angle. And I hope at this point you're starting to see this come together. The length of the black line segment is the one that I want to find. I'm going to call his length x. The length of the red line segment, because it's a perfectly horizontal line segment, I can find its length simply by counting up the number of boxes or the number of units. So he's six units long. And then the purple guy is going to be two units long. And now you can see this is really nothing more sophisticated than a seventh grade math problem. Let's go ahead and apply or use our buddy Pythagoras to help us find the length of x. So six squared plus 2 squared is going to be equal to x squared. All right, I'm going to take a moment and dig in my backpack and dig out my calculator. I want you to do the same exact thing. All right, got your calculator? Now, probably in the past, your teacher would have made you say, well, 6 squared is 36, and 2 squared is 4, and then 36 and 4 is 40. I'm going to say we got this snazzy calculator. Let's use it. I'm going to go to the home screen, open up a new document. And I know there's some people out there that have new calculators, and so we want to show you how to use this calculator. We're going to pick choice one, add a new document. So into this, I'm going to type 2 to the second plus 6 to the second. And then I'm going to hit enter. And I'm going to let my calculator evaluate that all in one step for me. So 2 to the second plus 6 to the second is 40. I'm going to replace those guys on my paper with a 40. I like seeing the variable on the left side of my equation, so I'm going to flip that around and make it x squared is equal to 40. And now I want to define x, not x to the second. So to undo squaring something, I'm going to take its square root. And if I take the square root of the left, I must also take the square root of the right. Now your teacher in the past would have told you, make sure you remember to take both a positive and a negative square root. But I'm saying our length of our line segment has got to be a positive number. 
length cannot be a negative number. I mean, I never went into Home Depot and said, well, I want to buy negative 40 feet of fence. It just doesn't make any sense. So since length is always expressed or displayed as a positive number, I'm not going to take both a positive and a negative square root. So now we've got this rather ugly looking little number on the right hand side of our equation and we might be asking ourselves, well, what is it we want to do with that? I'm going to tell you that unless they specify otherwise, we are always going to leave our answers in simplest radical form. So I'm going to say leave answers in simplest square root form. unless they tell us otherwise. Which brings us to the whole next conversation about simplifying square roots. Hopefully in algebra last year, your algebra teacher spent some time simplifying square roots with you. If not, put your seatbelt on because you're in for a wild ride and we're going to do a crazy, crazy crass course in simplifying square roots. To simplify any square root, I'm going to start with my list of perfect squares. For instance, I know that the square root of 1 is 1. I know that the square root of 4 is 2 and that the square root of 9 is 3 and so on and so forth. And I can go build this nice little list of perfect squares. And I think I'll probably stop right there because my number that I need to simplify is rather small. My next mission in simplifying these square roots is to go find the largest one of these guys on the left that will go into 40. So 36 doesn't go in, 25 doesn't go in, 16 doesn't go in, 9 doesn't go in, 4 is going to be the largest one that will go in. And I'm going to split this square root up into two factors, the first of which will always be the largest perfect square factor from this list, and the second of which is going to be the other factor. So 4 comes from my list, 4 times 10 is 40, that's how 10 goes in the other radical sign. Because you designed it this way, the first number in your radical will always be the one that you can take the square root of. So the square root of 4 is 2. 10, the second part of that problem, or the second factor, is not a perfect square and we cannot take its square root. And it therefore stays square root of 10. Now if I look at what's underneath this radical, the 10 doesn't have any of these factors from this list as factors. And so we know that we're fully and completely simplified. So the length of our line segment is 2 times the square root of 10. All right, so that was good. Let's see what we can do and go try another one. On the second one, I'm changing the coordinates of the second point to be 3, 8. But just like I did in the first example, I'm going to go ahead and begin by plotting those points. So there's negative 5, 4. There's 3, 8, which means that line segment is the one I want to find the length of. Like the first example, this guy is slanted, so we're going to go ahead and break him up into his horizontal part and his vertical part. And again, this creates this nice little triangle. We're trying to find the hypotenuse of our right triangle. All I'm going to do is count up the number of units in the horizontal change and the number of units in the vertical change. So this distance is 8 and that distance is 4. Now we're going to call on our buddy Pythagoras to help us out with the rest of this. So 8 to the second plus 4 to the second is going to be x to the second. Once again, I'm going to dig out my calculator to help me with this part. So that ends up being the square root of 80. I'm 
sorry, that ends up being 80. Again, I'm going to flip this around because I like to see the variable on the left-hand side, but that really is a personal preference thing. I'm not trying to solve for x squared. I'm trying to solve for x. So to undo squaring, I'm going to take a square root. And if I take the square root of the left, I must also take the square root of the right. And I'm remembering that in this problem, x represents the length of a line segment, which must be a positive length. So we end up with this number, x equals the square root of 80. So once again, I'm going to go back to this list that I generated up above, and I'm going to ask myself, are any of the numbers on this list factors of 80? So I'm going to dig my calculator out, and I'm going to see. So let's see, does 80 divide by 36? Nope. Does 80 divide by 25? You might say, well, Mrs. McCann, this is pretty tedious. This is kind of long. Is there a shortcut that I can use? There really is no shortcut here, folks. It's just a matter of plugging these in and seeing if you can get one that will go in evenly. All right, so 16, it looks like, went in five times. So I'm going to rewrite this square root, and I'm going to put 16, my, my number from this list, up here. That's going to be my first square root. The other factor, 5, is my second square root. And because I designed it this way, this is the factor, that's the piece I can take the square root for. So I'm going to take out the square root of 16 and replace it with its equivalent, which is 4. Square root of 5 I can't do, so that just comes down to the next line. And I find that the length of my line segment is 4 square roots of 5. All right, so this isn't really so bad. It's just a little glorified version of the Pythagorean theorem, really. If I go on to the next problem, though, some funky things start to happen. This one says, to the nearest tenth, find the distance between the two points whose coordinates are negative 4, 2, and the second point whose coordinates are 146, 52. And I look at this and I kind of go, huh? How am I supposed to plot that, those second coordinates? Well, this is an actual question that I stole from an old Regents exam. And I think this was a dirty little thing for New York State to put on a Regents exam because a kid can't use a graph in order to solve this. You're forced to come up with or to use some other method. And the other method that they want you to use is they want you to use something called the distance formula. I'm going to back up to number two now and show you on number two exactly where the distance formula came from. So I'm going to say the distance between two points is going to be equal to, if we think about what we put in here for the Pythagorean theorem, we put in our horizontal distance and squared it. We put in our vertical distance and squared it. But our horizontal distance was really just the difference between the two x values in our coordinates. So I'm going to say x2 subtract the first x coordinate. And then once we put it in here, we squared it. So I'm going to do the same thing over here in my formula and square it. Likewise, this vertical distance was really just the difference between the y coordinates, the difference between the 8 and the 4. And like the horizontal distance, when we put it in the Pythagorean theorem, we squared it. And at that point, we had the hypotenuse squared. To undo the squaring, we actually took a square root. So our actual distance is going to be the square root of all that stuff that we put in parentheses. This is the distance formula. This is a need to know by heart. This is something that needs to be memorized. So the next time you come back to class, we'll put that on a formula sheet so that you'll have in one place all those formulas that you get to memorize this year. So with that formula in the back of my mind, I'm now going to go ahead and head into example three. Anytime we use a formula in here, we're going to start by writing it down. So distance is equal to the di square root of x2 subtract x1. We want to square it plus y2 subtract y1. Square it. Now, kids will often ask me and say, does it matter which one I use for x2, x1, or x1, y1? 
in x2, y2? And I say, not really. The distance between negative 42 and 146.52 is going to be exactly the same as the distance between the point whose coordinates are 146.52 and the point whose coordinates are negative 42. So it really doesn't make a difference which order you put these guys in here. So I'm going to go ahead and start, and I'm going to say negative 4, the first x, subtract 146. Square it. The only key piece of information here is that if you make this your first x, the one who partners up with him, in this case 2, must become your first y. So that's going to be 2, subtract 52, and we want to square that. Now, when I go to enter this into my calculator, there's a few shortcuts that you can take that'll make your life a lot easier. I'm always going to have kids enter everything except the square root symbol. So as you go to enter this into your calculator, you're going to enter it exactly as you've written it down, except you're going to start by writing that open parentheses. So as I go to write this or enter this into my calculator, I'm going to start with the parentheses. I'm going to say negative 4 subtract 156. We want to square it. And then to that, we want to add the 2 subtract the 52. And we also want to close the parentheses and square that. And I just realized I entered that in my calculator wrong. I put in a 156 instead of a 146. I'm going to go enter that in. You probably got something different than I did if you input it into your calculator correctly. There we go. So this comes out to be 25,000. So I'm going to shoot back to my paper. I haven't taken a square root yet, so the square root sticks around. And now I'm looking at what's under that square root saying, wow, I have to do a whole lot of guess and check to simplify this. Now that said, if I go back to the problem, this question specified that I find that to the nearest tenth. So that means I'm actually going to go back to my calculator and I want to type in the square root of 25,000 and I want to evaluate that to the nearest tenth. So 158.114 to the nearest tenth is going to be 158. So the moral of the story here is make sure, or 158.1, Make sure you read the question, follow directions, ask what you're being, or give them what you're being asked to find. All right, number four, this one we could definitely do by putting it on a sheet of graph paper, and it would be quite easy by putting it on a sheet of graph paper, but we're going to be a little bit more sophisticated at this point and use our new formula. So anytime I use it, I'm going to start by writing it down. Distance is equal to the square root of the difference between the x-coordinate squared and the difference between the y-coordinate squared. And whatever it takes for you to memorize that formula, go do it. Whether it's you have to write it down 10 times or say it 10 times or make a song to it, make flashcards, you're old enough to know yourself well and know what you need to do in order to be able to memorize a formula. So I'm going to say let me go find the change in my x-coordinates. So that's a 3 subtract a negative 7. We want to square it. Go find the difference between the y-coordinates. That's a 5 subtract a negative 9. And we want to square it. I'm going to take a minute to go extend my square root because I need to be neat and complete in my mathematical computations. And now I'm going to go ahead and type exactly what I see beginning with that open parentheses. So into my cal calculator, I've got a 3 subtract a negative 7. 
close up the parentheses, square it. To that, I want to do 5, subtract a negative 9. I guess I need to go back and put my parentheses in there. And I want to also square that. So again, I've entered it into my calculator exactly the way it's on my paper. So that ends up being square root of 296. Unlike the last problem, they don't ask me to find to the nearest tenth. So I'm going to have to go to my list of perfect squares and find some perfect squares that go into 296. And again, there's really no rhyme or reason to this. I'm just going to go type in and see which ones will divide. I'll see if 296 will divide by 49. It doesn't. I'll see if 296 will divide by 36. It does not. See if 296 will divide by, well, it won't divide by 25. Let's check out 16. That's a no-go. See if it divides by 9. That's an, oh, I typed in 196 instead of 296. Doesn't divide by 9. Four goes in there 74 times. So those are the two factors I want. My perfect square factor of four goes first. My non-perfect square factor of 74 goes second. So two square roots of 74. All right, I know you're dying to go on, but at this point, I'm going to take a minute and thank you for the gift of your time, which is the most valuable thing you have. If you have questions, jot them down. We'll take a look at those last two examples the next time that you come to class. And again, my thanks.